As you can see out there, it is a cold and rainy day here in Kansas City. Yes, it's a cold and rainy day here in Kansas City. Rosie and I just got home, and as we were driving along, she was telling me about a, uh, a video that uh, she was watching. This girl makes videos about uh, homes that are used in movies and tells all the details about them. And it reminded me of a trip that we took a few years ago out to California. We went to Universal Studios uh, during that vacation and uh, one of the things that we did was uh, go on a field trip from Universal over to one of the largest and probably the most famous prop houses in Los Angeles. This is the place that movies uh, directors and uh, staff go to get uh, props for their movies and they have everything I mean we toured it and you've got uh, period clothing shoes jewelry glassware uh, guns knives all kinds of things from various periods of time so that the director and the, the art director and the set designer can put together a scene that is authentic with material from the right era. And it reminded me of a video that I made uh, back in February of 2013 that involves that exact subject and how uh, set directors and art directors can sometimes make a boo-boo. So I'm going to run a little bit of that film in here right now and show you what I'm talking about. Hey YouTube guys and YouTube gals, we're going to take a little trip down memory lane today. Yes, we're going to go all the way to Hollywood, California. So hop into the Wayback Machine, get ready, and we're going to point ourselves west and head down Route 66. What you're looking at is called a footed tumbler. It was made by the Jeanette Glass Company of Pennsylvania. and Jeanette began making glassware back in 1887 and continued for almost a, a century until finally closing their doors in 1983. During that history, uh, one of their most popular styles was what you're looking at right here. It's called iris and herringbone. Now, back in 1961, I went to my local TG&Y store and I bought a set of four of these tumblers as a Christmas present for my mother. How I ended up with them is another story for another day and I will do a video on that at some point because you may find it interesting how those events took place and how that history played out. But for now, let's change our focus and our location for a moment and go to the other side of the country Hollywood California Warner Brothers Studios circa 1961 let's eavesdrop on the set of Splendor in the Grass Natalie Wood and Warren Beatty are getting ready to film a scene in the Loomis dining room it's Christmas Day. Uh, Gene Callahan is the set director on this film and he's just finished setting the dinner table and getting the scene ready to shoot. When we look at the final edited version of that scene, something isn't quite right. But let's back up a bit so we understand what's wrong and why. The movie was set in southwestern Kansas in 1928. At that time, Jeanette Glass was manufacturing their glassware in the crystal or clear version only. In the scene Gene Callahan set up, after Ilya Kazan says action, 
and the camera does a slow pan across the dinner table in the Loomis dining room. Jean has set the table with a beautiful iris and herringbone footed tumbler at each place. He's even placed a bottle of my favorite, Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire, in the center uh, in a prominent spot. So, that's historically correct too, because as you can see, Lee and Perrin's has been around since 1835. So, no foul there. But, the iris and herringbone tumblers that Jean has used are the iridescent version, just like this. Beautiful. They look really nice on the screen. Unfortunately, Jeanette did not start making the iridescent tumblers until the late 1950s. Obviously, in 1961, when the movie was filmed, those tumblers would have been readily available. I can personally verify that fact because it was in 1961 that I purchased the one you're looking at here. But in 1928, when the movie is set, Jeanette only made them in the crystal, or the clear version. So, oops. And that, boys and girls, is our nostalgia for today. As a side note, uh, if you've never had the pleasure of watching Splendor in the Grass, I highly recommend it. And now that you're aware of it, watch for the iridescent iris and herringbone tumbler error. Obviously that was a mistake, but on the other side of the coin, Natalie Wood's performance in the film is beautifully and absolutely flawless. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed our little nostalgic journey, and I will have a follow-up for you regarding this particular tumbler and the uh, three sisters that uh, she has in the other room. This is the iris and herringbone tumbler that uh, I was talking about in that video. Um, I still have all four of them, and there is a story involving these four uh, tumblers and I think I told you in the video uh, how they came into uh, our possession originally, but uh, they were with my mother for a long time, and there's another story of how they came back to us. So I'll make a video on that in the near future and explain how that happened and how I happen to have them at this point. So that's it for now. Until I speak with you again, even after that, you stay focused.